Good morning. I'm back in Daydreams by Hannah Carlson. And we've been working on this page a little bit. Yeah, no, I didn't waste any time between the last video you got and this one. I'm just doing them back to back again. So that's why my flowers are not finished. But I do want to work on her today. Let me see how close I can get down here. Okay, I'm going to pull my chair up, sit down, and hopefully not move the book. I want to start with her face. All right, and you will do her hands also. When you do her hands, um, do the bottom part just a little bit darker because they are, okay, here. The colors I have, 22, no idea what color and 32, which is apricot. These are from um, Artesia. So a good flesh color, and then a color that is just a little bit darker. Okay, and yes, my shadow is on the page, but it's on there evenly, so I should stop worrying about it. Okay, so the tops are lighter. That's where the light is coming down. Okay? Yep, that's as big as I can go. Then the shade that's a little darker. I'm coming from the bottom up because that's where her shadows would be. And it's not a huge difference in the colors. Just enough that it does give just a little bit of dimension there. Okay? So, that's the hands. Like I said, not, not just a whole lot of difference in the shading. And the reason for that is when I get to the face, she is a young girl, and I don't want it to look overly dark. Okay, there we go down just a smidge so we get all of our hair in. Grab my chair. Next thing we're gonna do are the cheeks. Now, I have done skin and cheeks with y'all before, but let's see how this book takes erasing. Uh, let's see, I think what I'm going to do is actually use this. This is magenta, and again, it's the Arteza pencils. We know that she's probably a fair-skinned redhead because she has freckles. Okay, I just lumped everybody in there together. I understand that. But I am going to come in and do these cheeks. I'm going to get lighter as I come out. And I'm going to overdo the cheek area. And I'm going to go ahead and give her a red lip. Or a magenta lip. Now I'm going to come in with my eraser and I'm going to erase that. I know there's lots of ways to put blush in a picture. This is just the easiest way I have found to teach it. Okay, so stand back up. Oh, you can see. See how it, see how it actually stained the paper? So now when I come in with my lightest shade and go over the top, she has a pink cheek. I don't have to go back in there and try to color pink over the top and hope that I get not too much, just enough, and then still have to erase. Okay? So that's why I like to do the cheek first and then erase and come back in and do the face. All right, that was the lightest shade. This is the next shade. Her neck would be darker because all of her face is over the top of it. Her chin down under here would be a little darker. It's on the bottom. 
and then I'm going to do right on the forehead and I am going to do the bridge of the nose because as you tan that area gets darker because it's up closer to the light so are your cheeks but we've already done them pink now if you want her really to be the sun-kissed look you could also do the bridge of her nose in the pink and erase okay all right that's it for her face very easy all right hair time first of all I am back with yeah see the names off Artesia 73 I want to say this is a red orange or an orange red or something like that maybe it was blood red I think that's the color for theirs and then I'm using for my medium I am using carmine red which is 49 first one was 73 okay and then my darkest shade it's going to be Garnet, number 72. Now, Garnet is almost a brown, so be careful if you're using these colors. Try them out. See what you think. I have come through and done my first coloring. If you're coloring along, just pause this and do the coloring, okay? The way I look at it is the parts that are on top parts that are longest without being all chopped up are going to be the parts that are highlighted. So that's why I did the lightest. Then I'm going to come in with the next shade and I'm going to come into what I did before. Okay. I don't go all the way up next to the edge. because that's going to be the next shade. If you're afraid of getting lost, trade out pencils. Go back and do those pieces that are tucked up in there. Do that as you go. Yeah, for you that are friends with me on Facebook or on Coloring Books Make It Clean on Facebook, you know that we've just finished. Well, right now we're in the midst of it again. We can't get out. Um, whoops, wrong pencil. The second shade, and I'm coming in from the other end. Um, we are finishing up another little ice episode. It was just enough to keep us in and cancel school. So, I think some of the kids are happy. Some of the teachers are getting caught up on grading papers. If they remembered to take them home. Um, you know, it's, it's a if-if situation. Okay, now this is an underneath area, but I'm going to go ahead and get it because I'm here. So the middle is going to be the lightest. And then the edges are going to be my darkest. Now lightest meaning of these two shades. I did not bring my original pencil back into the mix. So yeah, so we're just at home. Um, I had already made up some beef and veggies in foil packets changing again to my color number two so like we had that today we have soup we have um, let's see I'm trying to remember what else we've been having we've had hmm guess it wasn't memorable oh I made us some baked potatoes going back to my darkest and in the baked potatoes, I put some um, really tender, it was like a, hmm, it's like a pork, 
like a pulled pork, I guess is what you would call it. Now, one reason I hummed is I'm looking through here and I'm trying to decide, is that an open area or just one strand that's going through? How do I want to do that? So let's see how sharp these pencils are. And if I can get just one piece through here, if not, it'll end up being that whole section. And I do believe it's going to be the whole section. So did you see how that worked? And I got it kind of backwards because I'm doing this darker and the ends lighter. So what I'm going to do is just finish that off dark, finish this off dark, and then come back with the medium and go over the top. You will have those areas where you just, you can't tell. So it's going to be up to you. This is my medium. It's going to be up to you to figure out where to put those darks and those mediums. But again, as the colorist, you know, you can't really go wrong when you're deciding stuff like that. It really is up to you to decide. The main thing is, if you will get some lights so back to the dark, anytime you see me doing the ends here with her hair, I'm going to be in the dark. Um, as long as you've got lights and darks going on, and she looks like she's got some highlights, you should be okay. Because I'm not trying to get like an all-over um, piece that's got everything just alike where each strand is perfect. I want her hair messed up. I want it blowing in the wind. I want lights and darks coming through. So just change back and forth. And see, I missed this down here. So while I see it, I'm gonna go back to my medium. My medium through here. And then to my dark and have my dark come through and see how it pushes it back and makes it look more wavy that's what you're after you're after that waviness yeah and I can't keep my shadow out of the picture okay here's another one of these that was like this so the middle section and then we'll do this middle section this middle and then we'll come do the darks on all of those um, work in little areas and it'll be easier for you to keep up and not get lost what you're working in and you can slow your videos down do you know that I think it's a little area that looks like a cog and you just take that and click on it and it tells you speed yeah and you can change that up I know when I'm listening to a book I will change the speed of the reader to like a 1.5 sometimes a little faster depending on what they're reading what I'm listening to medium shade I am gonna leave that one open um, yeah I've been known to speed a book up pretty quick as long as I can understand what they're saying I will speed it up again depending on what the book is darker shade and this would go all the way to there I'm okay with all of that being dark yeah You just really got to get an eye in on each one of these strands. There's not really a shortcut when you're doing strands unless you're going to do it all one color and just be okay with it. And if you are, that's fine. Nothing, nothing says you can't. Okay, so medium. Then going through here on medium. I'm going to come through here and make the end a medium. 
and then I'm going to tuck under with the darker shade just to kind of change it up a little bit. Okay, Let's see how we are time wise. Ugh. 15. Oh, good. I really thought it would take a lot longer than this. So, okay, I'm going to do the end in the medium and then go under in the dark because I've got dark on this side. Medium up and around here and in here. And I hope I don't do so much that I get lost in what I'm on. Okay. This is behind, but I went ahead and did it medium anyway, just so that it would show up against this. Does that make sense? I just wanted it to show up. And her hair is a little looser up through here. There you can see more little pockets of light coming through. So there's that to consider. And I just want it to look like she's got like hair on fire. She's a uh, tough little cookie there. She's out doing her business. I'm not sure what this is, so we're going to do it here. Now, see what I'm saying about sometimes you can't tell? So you just have to kind of go for it. So I'm going to leave that bit open, and then this one that's connecting up into here, I'm going to do it darker so that it tucks up underneath. And a lot of times we can go look at something. Um, you can go look at your own eyes when you're coloring eyes and doing different things, and it'll help you out. But when you're doing hair, you can look in the mirror at your own hair, but we're not going to see each strand like we do with all of this. So it is going to be a little different looking in the mirror than looking right here on a coloring page, just because of what is and isn't realistic. Now, did you see I go down through here? I'm really setting in a shadow from her band that's holding on her crown which will probably be done with gel pens. Glitter gel pens, yes. I'm all about that glitter. Okay, and now I'm just looking to see, I know this is not finished, but I'm looking to see through here, where do I still see lines and white spots? And I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to change over to my medium, and we're going to finish blending this. So yeah, I actually turned on my fireplace today. Didn't do it yesterday, not sure why not. Um, on, I think it was Wednesday, it was, okay, now you're seeing this a week late from when I'm actually doing it, so, um, yeah, it went from like 70 degrees at 8 a.m. down all day, that was the warmest it was, so, yeah, that was interesting, and we, we knew it was coming. We took um, my in-laws' groceries and stuff on Monday because we knew the temperature was going to drop. So, yeah, I got, made sure everybody was safe and all good. That it dropped down to in the 20s overnight. Yeah. Remember, we're Texas, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do here is a line. 
this is the shadow that that crown is casting. So I'm just going to bring lines down. I'm going to go the direction the hair is going, but I'm going to keep those lines choppy. Now, I have her hair basically finished. I could come back in with the lightest shade and do any shading that needs to be done. I could even come in with yellow and just brighten this whole thing up. Okay? I'm going to show you one more thing, though, that I can do. And I did this a long time ago. That needs to be colored in on a Peter Pan page that I did. And so I think if you'll look that up, you'll see it too. And it's highlights on black hair. This is going to be highlights on the red. If I mess it up, I color it again. But I'm going to make sure that the eraser, and I don't want this one. This one's too big for the spot I'm going into. So I'm going to get my smaller one right here. And I'm going to make sure that's fairly clean. It's not. So I'm going to take that out flip it around to the other end, which is clean, and it's got a good edge on it. Now I'm going to come in just where I think there might be extra highlights. Can you see the color coming off? I'm doing it ever so slightly, okay? So look up here at the front. Do it gradual. And then right here, trying to go the direction the hair is going so I don't end up with just a line. But look how her hair is lighter there now. So now we've actually put in another shade by erasing some. Okay. And I think I'm about done. I could I could erase and do it this forever, but I don't want to overdo it. And when I'm finished, I've got that on the end of my eraser, so I do need to wipe that off on a cloth or um, another piece of paper that's trash, just to make sure it's cleaned up. But now you can see She's got those highlights, and they're blended in because they were done with an eraser. Okay, so I think our page is looking good. That is all I have for you. So I will see you again in a few more days. Thanks for stopping by.